stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am kicking off my coverage of the Forgotten Age Deluxe Expansion with a look at the Guardian cards. There are uh, 20 player cards, uh, or sorry, 21 player cards in total in the Forgotten Age, four, of, uh, four in each class, as well as one neutral card. So I've uh, broken up the review into five parts, one for each class. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing, so with that in mind, uh, let's get started. The first card in the box is a new weapon for Guardians. This is Survival Knife. It's a two-cost asset with the item weapon and melee traits and a combat skill icon. It has the game text Fight. You get plus one for this attack. It also has the response trigger. After an enemy attack deals damage to you during the enemy phase, exhaust survival knife. Fight. This attack deal targets the attacking enemy. You get plus two combat and plus one damage for this attack. Now, uh, every cycle the Guardians seem to receive a new weapon of uh, dubious value. In the uh, Dunwich Legacy Big Box, Guardians received the Blackjack, which is uh, likely to have a permanent home in my binder. And uh, during the Path to Carcosa cycle, there was the uh, Trench Knife, which is going to spend most of its time in the binder right next to Blackjack. So uh, when I saw Survival Knife on the list of cards in the uh, Forgotten Age, I thought uh, it was destined to uh, join the uh, Guardian card's uh, Hall of Shame. Fortunately, the uh, Survival Knife is a lot better than either Blackjack or Trench Knife, although it may not seem like it at uh, first glance. For starters, it costs uh, twice as much as a regular old knife from the core set, but it uh, provides the same uh, combat bonus skill during a fight action. That uh, doesn't really make for a great first impression. However, the uh, Survival Knife's response uh, makes it one of the better melee weapons in the game. After an enemy uh, attacks you, you may exhaust the Survival Knife to launch a counterattack against the enemy. Now, nobody likes it when an investigator gets hit uh, by an enemy, because there's really nothing in it for the investigator uh, at this time. Survival Knife changes that. It also encourages players to change the way they look at uh, health and damage. Think of it this way. Most uh, pure guardians such as Zoe and Roland and uh, off-class guardians such as Skids and William Nor Yorick have health for days. Most of the scenarios we've encountered uh, so far in Arkham Horror have a far better chance of driving a guardian insane than uh, killing them outright. Although that may change in the Forgotten Age. I know there is uh, quite a bit of direct damage. In, uh, in the first scenario, at least. Survival Knife gives those investigators the option of, of spending some of that health to generate action advantage, transforming those hits from a, a negative into a positive. If you uh, combine Survival Knife with uh, some way to uh, heal the damage or soak it up using allies or items, Survival Knife could uh, generate uh, several extra actions per game that's pretty amazing for a uh, level zero card. The only uh, Guardian card that generates additional actions is a Police Badge, and it costs uh, two experience points. This sort of uh, trick works uh, particularly well at uh, the start of a campaign when you tend to encounter a lot of enemies such as the uh, Acolytes, Swarm of Rats, or Mobsters, which are more of a speed bump than, than any real threat to a Guardian. If you need to take a cheap hit or two uh, while you deal with more pressing matters, Survival Knife will, will make sure those enemies uh, don't see another enemy phase. Survival Knife also provides uh, added insurance for your enemy, enemy management uh, strategy. You know, who knows, maybe you had a string of bad draws from the Chaos Bag and failed to kill an enemy during uh, your turn, or maybe you weren't able to attack the enemy because you engaged it at the end of your turn Whatever the case may be, uh, after that enemy attack, Survival Knife gives you a chance to kill it during the enemy phase, so you don't have to waste time dealing with it during the following uh, investigation phase. You could even go all in on the strategy and pack two Survival Knives. If you imagine Zoe Samaras with a, a bandolier, a machete, and a couple Survival Knives, she has the potential to, uh, to attack five times in one round, and uh, I can tell you there are not many enemies in this game that are going to be still breathing after sustaining 10 damage. 
Survival Knife is a, is a welcome addition to the uh, Guardian card pool. It's certainly not the type of weapon that you're going to be relying on for all of your enemy management needs. Its basic fight action is, is simply not very good. That's, uh, that's really when you want to be using your lightning, or your lightning guns and your machetes. However, I could uh, see playing at least one copy of Survival Knife in my Guardian decks to, to clean up those stubborn enemies who refuse to die. I like the fact that uh, Survival Knife gives Guardians the option of taking a damage or two in exchange for an extra action here or there. An investigator such as uh, William York, who has plenty of options at his disposal to tank enemies and absorb punishment, uh, may be able to squeeze even more value out of uh, Survival Knife during the game. Now that may all change uh, during the Forgotten Age cycle, but uh, if you can generate one or two extra actions per game with Survival Knife, the card is, uh, has really done its job at that point. You uh, really can't ask for much more from a level zero card. And uh, I think this is a really, a really great card to, uh, to kick off the cycle. The uh, second Guardian card in the box is Venturer. It's a four cost uh, ally or four cost asset with an intellect skill icon and the ally and wayfarer traits. It takes up an ally slot and uses three supplies. As a free triggered ability, you may spend one supply and exhaust venture to place supply or ammo or on an asset controlled by an investigator at your location. Venture has two health and two sanity. If you're uh, planning an expedition into the untamed wilderness, you need someone who can make sure you've got all the supplies you need to survive. In the Arkham uh, Horror LCG, that guy is the Venture, the uh, third non-unique ally in the Guardian class, along with Beat Cop and uh, Guard Dog. Venture will uh, stock your uh, first aid kits, provide extra batteries for your flashlights, and make sure you have enough liquid courage, painkillers, and smoking pipes for the jungle trek. If you uh, happen to discover a strange solution in the jungle, Venture will be able to synth synthesize more of that too. And uh, don't forget about the, he won't forget to bring uh, the ammo either. Lots and lots of ammo to uh, kill all of those bloody snakes that you're going to encounter in the jungle. Yig be damned. While I like Venture's ability to dish out to extra supply and ammo tokens, I don't think he's going to uh, replace Beat Cop, Guard Dog, or Brother Xavier in uh, most Guardian decks. The uh, ally slot is one of the most competitive in the game, and uh, four resources feels like a lot to pay for an ally who doesn't have a huge impact on your board state. But uh, Venture wasn't really designed uh, with all Guardian decks in mind. He was designed to work with uh, one particular Guardian, and that uh, being Leo Anderson, an expedition leader who has a uh, pension for returning from uh, from uh, obscure corners of the globe with uh, far fewer men than uh, he left with. Honestly, I think it's going to be difficult for Venture to make the cut in uh, Leo Anderson decks too, at least uh, at the start of a campaign. Leo Anderson uh, has only one ally slot unless his signature asset is on the table, and uh, competition for that uh, slot is fierce. Besides uh, Mitch Brown, Beat Cop, and Guard Dog, Leo Anderson can also take Leo DeLuca, who is uh, easily one of the best allies in the game. If uh, Mitch Brown is in play and uh, Leo has two additional ally slots for non-unique allies, I really want Beat Cop and uh, Guard Dog to fill them, not to venture. You uh, probably remember that kid who always uh, was pecked last during sports when you were growing up. Well, I think uh, Venture is that kid. Now, I could uh, certainly see including Venture in your uh, Leo Anderson deck once you've purchased a copy or two, a copy or two of uh, Charisma, so you can play all of those allies uh, that have tagged along your expedition. Leo can uh, play Venture after his uh, turn begins for three resources, which is a, a much more reasonable price to pay for his ability. There's a good chance that you're going to play Calling in Favors in your Leo deck to, uh, to fetch Mitch Brown. And Venture is a decent target to bounce back to your hand uh, so you can play Brown or a Beat Cop for free. It's even better if you can offload all of Venture's supplies first, bounce him back to hand with the calling in favors, and then play him again later with a fresh load of supplies. 
The nice thing about Leo Anderson is that uh, you don't have to include Venture in his deck at the start of a campaign. Leo is part rogue after all, so you can always pick up a copy of Adaptable and uh, hire a Venture later if you, uh, if you find yourself running low on uh, supplies and ammo. If you're worried that Venture doesn't have enough supplies, you, you may even consider running an upgrade, the uh, level 3 emergency cache from the Pallet Mask. The uh, level 3 cache can dump up to 4 more supplies on Venture, which uh, should be more than enough to last you uh, until the end of a typical scenario. An expansion uh, themed around jungle expeditions wouldn't be complete without a card like Venture. He's not the star of the show by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, he was never meant to be either. Venture works uh, much better as a support character who, can, who uh, Leo Anderson can call on to resupply his expedition once it gets underway. And uh, once Venture has done his job, Leo will give him a proper burial in the jungle, just like he has done with so many of his unfortunate allies uh, before him. The uh, third Guardian card in the uh, box is Trusted. It's a one-cost event with a willpower skill icon and the upgrade trait. It has the game text Fast. Play only during your turn. Attached to an ally asset you control. Attached asset gets plus one health and plus one sanity. Trusted is the first of two upgrades for the Guardian card pool, and uh, I like it quite a bit just for the small health and sanity boost it provides. In this respect, the card reminds me a lot of uh, Fine Clothes, the neutral asset uh, from where Doom awaits. Fine Clothes is one of those cards that uh, really grew on me during the Path to Carcosa cycle. Sometimes uh, one health or sanity is the difference between uh, winning and or losing a scenario, and uh, paying one resource for an extra health and sanity is a real bargain. Trusted uh, works pretty much the same way, except that uh, it's fast and it doesn't take an action to play and you have to attach it to an ally rather than your body slot. Pretty much uh, every deck plays allies, so it shouldn't be uh, too difficult to find uh, someone in your party who you can trust. On the other hand, if you're uh, planning to burn through allies like a typical Leo uh, Anderson expedition, kill them off to replay them uh, from the discard pile with William York, or bounce them back to hand uh, repeatedly with calling in favors, trusted uh, may not be the card for you. Trusted is uh, ideal for decks that want to uh, keep one or two powerful allies in play for as long as possible. Leo Anderson's signature asset, uh, Mitch Brown, Soul Survivor, is a, a good example of a target for Trusted. Leo gains uh, two slots for non-unique allies as long as Mitch is in play, so keeping Mitch alive is very important if you uh, want to take advantage of that ability. A copy or two of Trusted uh, goes a long way to ensuring that Mitch doesn't uh, meet an untimely end and uh, potentially take another member of your expedition down with him. Guard Dog uh, and uh, Level 2 Beat Cop Aquina and uh, Peter Sylvester are, uh, also make good uh, potential targets for Trusted. Trusted lets you uh, squeeze a little bit more direct damage uh, out of those allies, or in uh, the case of Peter Sylvester, heal uh, more horror. Trusted uh, isn't a flashy card, but it's uh, worth considering in your Guardian or, or, or off-class Guardian decks. At worst, uh, Trusted is a fast, cheap resource of, of extra health and sanity that you can play on one of your allies or one of your uh, friend's allies if you happen to be playing multiplayer. If you're playing allies such as Guard Dog and Beat Cop, you can convert that to extra health into more direct damage. And that uh, little extra sanity is, is nice to have as well. Really good card here. The uh, final Guardian card in the box is Reliable. It's a one cost event that costs one experience point. It has an intellect skill icon and the upgrade trait. It has the game text Fast. Play only during your turn. Attached to an item asset you control. While resolving a triggered ability on attached asset, you get plus one to each of your skills. The uh, second upgrade in the box for the Guardian card pool, Reliable, uh, gives investors a new way to uh, modify their skill value for skill tests. Since the core set days, players have been able to modify their skill value in at least three different ways. They can play assets such as Beat Cop, which provide a static boost to their skill value. 
They can uh, use free triggered abilities on uh, composures and talents such as physical training, spending resources to boost their skill value. Or players can commit cards to the skill check, uh, boosting their skill value by one for each uh, relevant skill icon on the card. Reliable is uh, similar to the talents that uh, we've seen so far in that it's fast and that you're essentially pr paying uh, one resource to boost your skill value by one. The uh, beauty of Reliable is that it uh, attaches itself to an item, in to the item in question, giving you that uh, plus one bonus to each of your skill uh, checks each time you use it. You resolve that asset's triggered ability. Most of the time you're going to attach Reliable to a weapon such as a machete or a shotgun to add one to your, your combat skill each time you attack with it. And uh, that's pretty amazing value for one measly resource. You could uh, also attach Reliable to other weapons such as the 45 Automatic, but you're not going to get to that Reliable bonus once your clip is empty. So you should probably bring some uh, extra ammunition, ammunition along if you uh, want to go down that route so you can uh, continue to lever that, leverage that bonus. The same goes for a, for a big gun like the uh, shotgun. You want to have some extra ammo so you can keep getting that reliable bonus shot after shot. You could even attach reliable to uh, other items such as the uh, flashlight, lowering the shroud value of your location by one and uh, gaining plus one intellect when uh, you uh, investigate if you've got a way to add supply tokens to your flashlight, such as the, uh, the Venture we looked at earlier during this review, that's uh, even better. It's uh, worth noting that you get plus one to each of your skills while resolving a triggered ability on the as asset attached to Reliable. If uh, Skids O'Toole attaches Reliable to his lock picks, he gets plus one intellect and plus one agility, boosting his uh, skill value to uh, nine while investigating. Needless to say, uh, it's unlikely Skids is going to break many reliable lockpicks during a typical scenario. Reliable is uh, fantastic in combination with cards like lockpicks, so it's worth keeping an eye out uh, for other items uh, down the road that will let you add uh, two skill value, uh, two skill, the value of two skills together uh, for a skill test. And uh, if you can get reliable down on them, you get to double up on that bonus. If you're playing an investigator who can take uh, level 1 guardian cards, Reliable is one of those cards that's going to be uh, difficult to pass up. For the cost of a card and a resource, you can attach it to an item and adding one to each of your skills whenever you use it for the remainder of the game. That's uh, going to save you from uh, committing a lot of cards and resources in the long run. And uh, that is, uh, that's very good value in, uh, in my view. That is going to do it for my review of the Guardian cards in uh, The Forgotten Age. Guardians receive a lot of solid cards in this box. Survival Knife is certainly a pleasant surprise after uh, several subpar weapons in uh, previous expansions. It uh, gives Guardians a way to turn some of the health they've got into extra actions. I'm not uh, particularly wild about the idea of putting uh, a Venture in my level 0 Leo Anderson deck, but uh, I could certainly see him making the cut once uh, Leo has a few more ally slots available. An uh, ally who is able to chip in with some extra ammo or supplies is a, is a very nice addition to a deck once you've got uh, that lightning gun that you've always wanted. As for Trusted and Reliable, they, will, uh, they help a Guardian shore up his or her allies and weapons respectively. respectively. And uh, if you're an avid Guardian player, I think these cards are, uh, are certainly going to find a home uh, in your decks. Really good stuff to, uh, to start off the cycle. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this review, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.